What's up guys, Reddit's Reviews here with you again. And I'm coming at you with another firearms history video today. We are going to be discussing a combat handgun that's pretty interesting in my opinion. Before we get into the thick of it with this 9mm pistol, I want to remind you guys that if you like seeing these military surplus firearm videos here on YouTube, to please give the video a thumbs up to help it out with that Google algorithm and to catch all my future videos like this one to subscribe to the channel. And if you have any ideas for future videos that you would like to see from me, let me know about those down in the comments. Now this is the Egyptian Helwan 9mm pistol. You will sometimes also hear these referred to as the Brigadier, the Helwan Brigadier, the Egyptian 951, the Helwan 951, the 951 Brigadier, or some other combination of those terms. The Helwan is, however, an Egyptian military surplus handgun that is essentially a licensed copy of the Beretta M1951 pistol. So before we talk about the Egyptian 951, we must first cover its Italian progenitor. In the late 1940s, Beretta began designing a new handgun to replace the older M1934 in Italian military service. They were looking to step up to a more substantial cartridge than what was possible with their earlier blowback design handguns. Of course, a more powerful round calls for a stronger action, and thus they were developing a lock breech design. With the help of Pietro Beretta himself and a ton of design inspiration from the German Walther P38, the Italians put together what was their very first lock breech handgun, the Beretta Modelo 1951. The M1951 was a rugged and well-designed pistol. It proved to be very reliable and accurate and not to mention powerful being chambered in the 9mm Parabellum cartridge. Even though the M1951 was a very solid firearm, it failed to receive Italian Army adoption. However, it did get an Italian Navy contract, and it was very popular with other security and police forces. Limited production of the Beretta 1951 actually began in 1953, and in 1956 it went into full-scale production at Beretta. Production of the M1951 by Beretta continued all the way until 1980. The Beretta 1951 was never really offered as a commercial firearm. Beretta was really trying to focus on military and police contracts with these guns. Very early examples of the Beretta pistols were produced with an aluminum alloy frame. Unfortunately, these lightweight alloy frames proved to be unable to hold up to the beating that a full power 9mm cartridge dishes out. Around 1955, alloy frame production firearms was halted and they went to a solid steel frame construction instead, increasing the weight of the firearm, but also increasing the durability. This is around the time that Egypt enters the picture. Prior to the 1950s, Egypt outsourced basically all of their military weapons. The majority of what they used came to them from Western nations. After World War II, Egypt officially adopted the 9mm Parabellum cartridge as their military standard for both submachine guns and handguns. They actually began using a modified Tokarev variant that was developed in Hungary and of course chambered in 9mm. We refer to these Tokarevs as the Tok Egypt. It's a firearm that I would actually like to add to my collection should I ever run across one. Although the Tokarev is a fine handgun design, the Egyptian brass was still looking for a better fit for their armed forces. This led to them testing out some of the Beretta made M1951 pistols. The Egyptians really liked these M1951 pistols by Beretta. It was noted that they performed very well in a sandy environment. The Egyptian Arab Republic did request a few changes to the firearm from Beretta though, including a more narrow grip, larger sights, and a different magazine release. Egypt placed an order for 50,000 M1951 pistols from Beretta. There were later changes made to the 951 pistol. The slide was lengthened, apparently to improve balance, and the sights were reverted back to the smaller sights that Beretta initially used with the original 1951 because they were lower profile and less likely to get hung on holsters or clothing. In the late 50s and early 60s, Egypt began making moves to produce their own military firearms. They received technical knowledge and machinery from the Swedish and began producing Hakim rifles. They also sought to license 
the 951 from Beretta to begin making their own handguns as well. They were successful in negotiating the rights to produce the M1951 under license in Egypt. And apparently the Italians also helped them out by getting them going with tooling. And this is where we finally make it to the Mahdi produced Egyptian Hell One pistol that we're taking a look at here today. The Hell One is considered to be more crude and certainly less polished than its Italian counterpart. As far as the Hell Ones produced for military service go though, they are regarded as solid, reliable firearms, just as good as anything made by Beretta, although maybe not quite as pretty. So the Egyptian military Hell Ones are great, but there were also Hell One pistols specifically produced for commercial sales. And these commercial production Hell One pistols are known to have some issues, most notably questionable heat trading of the steel, leading to broken parts, especially the locking blocks. Most of the Hell One pistols available on today's collector market here in the US were imported in the 1990s. And at the time, they were pretty darn inexpensive, but like everything else in the gun world, they have crept up in price a good deal since then. Now that we've covered a very brief history of the Egyptian 951 Hell One, let's get a better look at my specific example. Unfortunately, my pistol is one of those commercial production pistols that we were just negatively speaking of. If this was a Hell One produced for military service, it would have Arabic slide markings. This pistol was imported by Century Arms International, and there's our full-on import stamp, Hell One caliber 9mm Parabellum made in Egypt by Modico. Most of the Century Arm imports of these pistols came into the country in the 90s, and this example was most likely among those. My pistol is in really nice condition for the most part. Of course, it is not a 100% example. It has been handled, but it looks pretty decent if you ask me. The grips on Hell One pistols are well known for being a little bit fragile. Fortunately, mine is still all in one piece. The ergonomics of this handgun are decent, it definitely feels good in hand. No doubt that has something to do with being a single stack pistol. I did find the far setback trigger to have a little bit of a learning curve when I first started shooting this firearm. In my regular shooting grip, the trigger kind of lands in the crease of my finger, leading to the shots pulling to the side, unless you pay close attention to your trigger squeeze. The more rounds I put through the pistol though, the more used to it that I got and my groups did start to improve. The safety is an odd one. It is a crossbar safety very much like those commonly found on shotguns and 22 rifles. Actuating the safety to the left does safe the firearm and the hammer will not fall. If you press all the way to the right, you can see a little red line, just as you would on a shotgun or 22, and that disengages the safety, allowing the hammer to drop. The magazine release is in sort of an odd place for US shooters. It is at the very bottom left-hand side of the grip here. It is quite easy to actuate though. And this little tail on the bottom of the magazine gives you something to hold on to as you're extracting it. These magazines are not drop free. You do have to pull them out. That is an eight round single stack magazine, all steel construction. The pistol has a little lanyard loop, should you require such. The trigger pull itself, being single action, is pretty decent. Now, of course it is not as good as something like a high-end 1911, but it's not too bad. Fairly light and has a decently clean break in my opinion. I like these slide serrations. They provide some very good purchase when working the slide of the firearm. I don't know if this is just my pistol or not, but the slide release lever on mine is extremely heavy. It requires a lot of force, far more than any other handgun I've encountered. It does function properly though. We'll do a quick field strip here. Disassembly on this firearm is very easy. We have our little takedown lever here on the side and our takedown notch. Pull the slide aft to line up with the lever. Rotate the lever. Mine's a little tight, but with a little bit of pressure, the slide does come off of the frame. There's our slide rails. Nice thick steel. We can certainly see some tooling marks, but the magic really happens here with the slide. There's the guide rod and spring. Now the barrel is locked into place because this is a locked breech firearm. We depress this little button, unlocking the action and allowing the barrel to be removed. This sort of tilting lock of the Hell One or Beretta 51 is derived almost directly 
from the Walther P38. As I mentioned earlier, the ubiquitous Beretta 92, which of course became the US M9 pistol, also uses a very similar locking action. However, it did undergo several updates. Now my example being a pistol produced for commercial sales is one of those where the metallurgy is in question. Apparently the heat treat on the steel parts of these firearms is not always the best and you will sometimes encounter durability issues with these locking blocks. This little piece here that moves up and down is what locks the firearm. And if you have an example where the steel is a little bit soft and you're shooting a lot of nine millimeter through it, the pressures of that nine millimeter is enough to break or maybe even completely shear off these little wing-like tabs on the outside of that locking block. Now mine is still in virtually perfect condition. I do not plan to put any nine millimeter through this handgun that is particularly hot in any way. I wouldn't put any bullets through my example greater than 115 grain, and I certainly wouldn't shoot anything that's higher than standard pressure. Just plain old standard pressure, nine millimeter, 115 grain, and hopefully my pistol will hold up okay. If for some reason these locking blocks do break, you can find replacements. However, those replacements are becoming quite scarce these days. And in some cases, almost as expensive is the pistol itself, depending on where you find it at. I do find the locking system of this firearm to be pretty neat though. And it's interesting to see that its lineage dates all the way back to before World War II. The sight picture on these firearms is a pretty crude one at best. You have nice sharp edges, but it's so low profile and everything is so dark that it can be a little hard to make out that front sight sometime. That front sight blade is very short and the rear sight has a square notch. They are functional, but certainly not the best. I would love to run across one of those examples that Egypt had Beretta put the larger sights on to compare. So the Egyptian Hell One, a steel framed Cold War era military pistol that in my opinion is darn fun to shoot. Short recoil operated, semi-automatic, single action, and sending eight rounds of nine millimeter. These pistols are pretty perfect for the shooter looking for a very functional firearm that also has some cool mil cert flair, given you actually have a military contract example. Unlike myself, if you are considering adding a Hell Wand to your collection, it's probably best to hold out for one that was a military contract example, as opposed to one of the ones made for the commercial market, like mine. They are apparently more reliable, more durable, and they will certainly hold their value better in the long run. While shooting this firearm, we only encountered one malfunction, and that was under rapid fire testing. So they might not be 100% reliable, but they're most certainly reliable enough for a cool little range toy. My favorite thing about the Hell One is probably its chambering in nine millimeter. I store a large quantity of nine millimeter ammo as it is. And so unlike most Milserp handguns, shooting this one is very cost effective, which in my opinion leads the Hell One and the Beretta 1951 for that matter to being a pretty desirable surplus handgun option. And I think that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future videos, and let me know what you thought about the video down in the comments. Are you a Hell One owner? And if so, what are your opinions on this firearm? Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will catch you in the next video. See you then. Peace.